Welcome to Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out with Julie Caraccio. Every Tuesday at 1 p.m., Julie interviews experts on all areas of clutter, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. Learn easy-to-implement tips on how to release clutter and get organized to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. An award-winning professional organizer and coach, Julie also shares suggestions to help you live clutter-free for a more joyful and fulfilling life. Soothe your soul with our customized aromatherapy blends designed to support you in clearing clutter. Our unique blends include Space Clearing, Zen Mind, Serenity, Awareness, Natural Awakening, Loving Kindness, Gratitude, Forgiveness, Blissful Balance, and Present Time, which will become your favorite. Learn more at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. Our limiting beliefs can create clutter for us in all areas of our lives, and traumas can keep us stuck in the past. Today, learn how to let go of your limiting beliefs and trauma. Hey, everyone. How do you change limiting beliefs? How do you change trauma that happened to you? Even if you've intellectually dealt with your trauma, what's going on if it's still in the energy body? How can you clear that? And how can you make it get cleared even faster? Well, tonight's guest is going to share all that wonderful information with us. I found a really uh, great newsletter this morning, and I wanted to share my thought of the day that is actually something that Stephen Covey had written. And he had talked about how do you live between the dash. And what he meant by that is taking your birth date, dash, your, when you die, and how you're living in that dash, and how you're living your life in between. And he wrote some assumptions to live by. So I'd like you to listen to these and pick one, and starting this week, try to work on that. For the body, assume you've had a heart attack. Now live accordingly. For the mind, assume the half-life of your profession is two years. Now prepare accordingly. For the heart, assume everything you say about another, they can hear you. Now speak accordingly. For the spirit, assume you have a one-on-one visit with your creator every quarter. Now live accordingly. So I want you to think about those and see in what areas in your life you can start living it better. So I'm very excited about tonight's guest. I have to give a huge shout out to her. She was able to come in at the last minute. We were going to have someone from Honduras, and because of the tropical storms, they couldn't get internet service. So Lisa was wonderful enough to fill in with us. Lisa Transcendence Brown is a light worker and helps people understand, clear and or release trauma, memories, agreements, energetic cords, raise your vibration, let go of egoic suffering, and expedite healing during the awakening ascension process. She has been blessed to have experienced the most traumatic things so that she could help others from a place of love and compassion. Her intuitive abilities and sense of knowing are her strengths. She just knows and can help through what she feels. She's a certified Reiki Level 3 Master Teacher, Usui System of Natural Healing, Lisa also has a Bachelor of Metaphysical Sciences and is currently completing her thesis for a Master's in Metaphys- Metaphysics to go on to dual doctorates, one in spiritual counseling and the other as credentials for publishing. She is raw, vegan, organic, eating to sustain her current physical body. Lisa has a most awesome son and grandson who are very special and loved. Welcome, Lisa. Hi, thank you. So everyone can see how wonderful you look, so you might create a raw revolution here <laughs> in addition to healing all the trauma. Well, it's been awesome for me going raw, so if somebody else decides to, that would be phenomenal. Well, we'll tell that they can ask you about questions for that. So let's get started. Everyone hears we should release the past and trauma, yet so many of us seem to get stuck, whether it happened to us when we were 5, 15, 30, whatever. So many of us seem to be living in the past. What's your, been your experience when helping people? Um, my biggest experience is actually experiencing it myself. And I had to experience virtually everything before I could help another person with it, which is why I'm able to go to that place of compassion to feel for somebody who is having the same type of experiences that I've had before. Um, 
with others, I can draw on my own experiences. I've been there. So I think being someone who's been there with every experience, um, <laughs> pretty much known to man, um, really helps because it's not me speaking from a book that I read about something saying, well, you should do this. I'm coming from a place of I've been there. And I've, using the terms, overcome them, and I'm free from them. And if I can do it, then anybody can do it. But why do you think we struggle so much with overcoming trauma or something that's happened in the past? Why do we get stuck there? It's safe. It's what we know, it's what we've learned, it's what we've been taught. It's the safe place to go. Um, it's easy, or it appears easy. It's not technically easier, but that's what, our safe place is what we know. And it's scary to step outside of our comfort level, but it's so freeing once we do just being able to have faith and, and learn to trust in something within ourselves that we've never trusted in before. So even, so this might explain why, for example, someone is in an abusive relationship because people say, oh, I don't understand why a woman stays with someone that physically abuses her. It's, in some way, it's safe, and I put that in quotes, or the woman was receiving, again, putting in quotes, a benefit. It's, it's safer to stay in what we know as opposed to going into the unknown. Is that fair? In some uncertain terms. Um, normally, those who end up in abusive relationships have experienced it their entire lives. They don't know anything else. So from a physical standpoint, it, it's repeating um, what we were raised with. From a higher standpoint, it's going to continue to happen until we learn to heal that that is either with us on a soul level or as part of an agreement for something we chose to experience to learn from so until we learn from it we continue it um which is why it's so important to help each other find other perspectives and find other ways to see that there is a way to gain our own inner strength and move away from the things that have limited us in the past and kept us prisoner. So how do, um, we, go ahead. How do we release trauma? How do we move forward from that? It has to be a choice. Um, I meet a lot of people. They're like, "No, I, I don't want to. I don't want to make that decision. It's easier for me to stay here." And for a long time, I had a hard time with that because I wanted to save everybody. Um, I, I finally learned that you can't save anybody but yourself. And all that I could do was become the best thing that I could be and then help those that came to me saying, I've seen you do it and I want that too. And that's how I help people now. They have seen me and been through it with me and suffered the brunt of me in my worst times. And they're going, wow, you know, I want that. I want to be happy. And we, we can choose to be happy in the worst circumstances. Um, everything changes when we become aware and awareness alone gives us a whole new world that we were never um, privy to before so if someone the first step if i'm hearing you correctly is someone can say i'm ready i'm willing to change i have a choice and that i can release and move forward from trauma or limiting beliefs is that correct yeah i mean Somebody has to really want it. Um, I've helped people that didn't know they had a choice. And in showing them that there are choices, they choose it. But they have to be ready. And technically, every path I cross, I cross for a reason. They're there for a reason. To help me and for me to help them. 
we learn from each other, we teach each other. And I never help a person that doesn't teach me. Uh, we're all students. So, um, go ahead. One of the things that you say on your website, you call yourself a light worker, and you say that you're an, you work with the energetic body. So if you could maybe talk about what you mean by being a light worker and working with the energetic body. So for instance, if we've had trauma, we might have dealt with it intellectually, but not in, yeah. from an energetic perspective. So can you talk about that? Yeah. Um, intellect is a safety mechanism. It's where we go to justify and reason why things have happened to us a lot of times. Um, there is no reasoning for a lot of the things. So we have to step outside our intellect to go into a place within our heart, um, which is not easy to do when we've shut down or when we've been so beaten and battered or um, we've closed off because we've been through so much. Um, our intellect um, creates walls. And a lot of people ego bash, um, but technically our ego is just our logic. And there is not a lot, lot of logic in what we go through. Energetic body healing. Um, I do multiple things. For a long time, it was very confusing for me because I did so much. I didn't know what I was here for. Um, I could do energy healing. I could do speaking to people. And I did not know that just by speaking to people, I could help them heal. Um, that's actually one of my biggest strengths with helping people um, is just by talking to them. Um, I can intuitively pick up on, on what's underneath and hit a trigger, causing stuff to come up people don't even know is there. I can see it, I can feel it, whatever. Um, it, energetically, when I do healing sessions, um, I don't... I'm, I don't like the word healer because we're facilitators. We, we open a place for somebody to heal. We help people heal themselves. Um, but each person is different. Each experience is different. And each time I go into a healing session with either an entire group or an individual, that experience is completely different. Um, I'm learning lately with, with my sessions that a lot of people's traumas are not only anchored, sorry, I closed my eyes when I, um, I apologize, but I close my eyes a lot, I'm not asleep. Um, a lot of people's traumas are anchored in other dimensions, other lifetimes. Um, there is no past or present, it's all linear time. So, when I'm, when I'm doing energetic sessions, a lot of times I'll end up in other lifetimes and their traumas, their soul pain that they're experiencing here is only carry, is carried over into this dimension, this lifetime. But and it just continues. Go ahead. Sorry. When you're talking about the energetic body, I'm kind of want people who maybe aren't familiar with that. Are you talking about their aura? When you talk about having to, you know, release the trauma in their energetic body, or are you talking about helping in the physical body or the spiritual, mental, emotional? What do you mean by that? Do you mean okay. their aura? It's all tied in together. Um, physical body, energetic body, emotional body um, are all tied. One affects the other. Um, every physical body has a spiritual body. The spiritual body has, is, a, I'm able to feel it outside of, usually for me, I'm within three or four inches of the body. I don't actually touch a person. I can actually go into what y'all would consider the auric field. I, I don't know, I use energy body because I'm, I'm an energy. I don't see colors per se, like most people do. I can reach my hand into the, the energetic field around the body and tap into memories or tap into imbalances. Um, those imbalances do create emotional issues and physical um, responses or, tr or problems 
as a result of those imbalances. So could so, you give us an example of maybe something that you've seen in someone in an energetic body that's created an imbalance or I'm just, I'm trying to help people understand, for instance, uh -huh. you shift. Emotionally, you um, I do a lot of uh, chakra balancing because um, I found that just the chakras alone get off, get, get off balance um, just by a, an emotional trigger can, can offset. Um, and, and throw us backwards um, by just balancing the chakras brings that into alignment allowing us to function on a better physical and emotional and um, level and, and that is an energy that that I deal with um, the if somebody's having a problem with finances um, a balancing of their third chakra their solar plexus um, will cause them to have um, more inner strength, more will, more drive. I've had people that are out of balance and then go and become more financially stable afterwards because they've had no drive, no will. Um, I've had people that have traumas um, that I can feel, I can see the density, I can see the dark energy that when I pull, I, I do what I call pulling, I, I, from the energetic body and immediately they have a release of emotion and all the trauma and pain that's been anchored there since childhood or whatever lifetime comes up and they release and let go. So it depends on where in the body it's anchored. Um, I've opened third eyes and mediums, clairvoyants, healers are able to to reconnect where they had lost that ability to connect and, and, and do their work. So um, it, it depends on where. Um, for me personally, I allowed somebody to, to balance me a few weeks back unknowingly and they did me backwards and messed me up really bad. I got really sick for a week and it took me a week to figure out what was going on and I called a friend and I'm like, I need you to really get over here, I need you to help me and I taught her how to fix me and within, by the next morning I woke up, I dropped the 14 pounds of fluids that I was retaining overnight from the, the messed up chakras <laughs> and I was back to normal again and everything started going away. So um, it definitely affects our health, um, both emotionally and physically. So how do you help people? So if you can help them energetically shift that, for instance, what would you say to someone who has a lot of limiting beliefs? What is something that they could do to help shift that themselves? Um, learning that everything that we are limited by is technically in our head, their thoughts. And we choose, we, we have an option to choose thoughts now. We can change the way we believe. Now it has to be a choice. People that say, no, 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 I was raised that way and I have to live that way, um, it won't change. People that say, I don't care what it takes, I have to change, I know that this has never done right by me, this has never served a purpose. Um, I teach them how to reprogram their thoughts and start creating um, different thought processes. Um, the only thing that tells us we can't succeed are the thoughts in our head. And once we start paying attention to the thoughts that we think and the words that we say, we can change them. I mean, if you wake up one morning and, and you have a negative thought, and I don't like positive or negative, but I'm using it for the sake of descriptives. If you have a low vibrational thought, change it. I mean, it's as simple as that. Everything in our head is our own. And the thoughts in our mind are created by the belief systems that we were raised by um, or that we've learned. And we know better here in our heart that those things don't serve a purpose any longer, but it has to be a choice. Um, it was very hard for me which is why I help people now. It was very hard for me to change the way I thought. I thought I was a wonderful person, that I helped everybody, and that I came from a great place. I did not know I had so many walls up 
Um, the strength is actually my weakness. Um, and that everything I was doing was to fill a hole. And when the hole is gone, then where we come from is completely way beyond anything that we do because we're taught that way. It comes from inside. So and, uh, go ahead, a key then is becoming aware, it sounds like. And I want to just remind everyone, if you have a question for Lisa, you can chat it. I'm sure she'll be happy to answer it. Or you can call in at 919-518-9773 or Skype in at Computers 2K Voice. So if I'm, if I'm hearing correctly, and I know because I've read a lot of your blogs on your website, the first step seems to be, or an important step, to become aware. You know, I have, a, have an example, like when you were talking about how you thought, oh, I'm just very helpful. I mm-hmm. once had someone years ago say to me, you're standoffish. And I was really surprised by that because I'm like, no, I'm warm and outgoing. But once I took a step back, I was like, wow, they're right. And, you know, we won't go into my whole psychology, but, you know, I know what it stemmed from. But once I was able to hear that, I was like, OK, now I can practice being aware of it. And I don't and I hope I'm not that way anymore. Well, I, I think from my experience is that I truly I had a good heart. I wanted to really help people, but I didn't know the difference. And awareness is something that just happened to me one day. I'm standing there and time slowed down and I started looking at things differently. And it was really a weird experience because at that moment, I was not participating any longer. I was observing everything that was going on and I could see a whole bigger picture. And it was no longer about being involved. It was more about learning from it and and being able to change things by choice now. Um, I used to have a girl that would tell me and it would irritate the mess out of me. And, but it was funny because we would correct each other on our words. And if I said, I can't, she'd say, well, you're not trying. And or no, I'd say I'm trying and she's like, well, then you're not doing. And I hated that, but you know what? It was true. Um, but just means no. We have and- a question for you, Lisa, sure. from Papa New. Um, Cause okay. I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this. I have painful memories from a few embarrassing situations mm-hmm. I, and they have shaped my adult life. I want them gone. What would you say to Papa? First, understand that the painful memories are memories, they're thoughts still. Um, Making a choice to release them and let them go. That nothing done to you was done to you. It was done by another person because of the way they viewed the world or their reality. And that everything happens for a reason. When we have learned from something, we no longer need it. The only time we hold on to it is when we need to remain victim to it. When it has served a purpose and we decide that we're done, we can choose to let go. Now, there are processes for doing that, um, taking responsibility, um, not for the purpose of blaming, but just for saying, yep, I had a part in that, and so what? Um, doesn't matter anymore. Technically, everything that we're focused on that keeps us stuck in the past is done and gone. And we, ha- we can make a conscious choice to let it go. I want you to talk a bit, because you just touched on it, but it was one of my questions. Can you talk about the victim mentality? Because I think a lot of people fall into that. And... You know, why do we stay in that? Maybe suggestions to shift that. But why do you think so many of us are in the victim mentality? Um, It goes back to still being safe. It's what we know. It's our story. Mm. Um, I was a consummate victim, and I didn't know it. I would have told you in a heartbeat, I'm not a victim. I'm strong. I've survived everything. Even saying I survived kept me victim. 
because as long as I looked at any situation and saw that somebody was to blame, somebody needed to pay for my pain, my misery, whatever the case may be, I was a victim to it and it owned me. Um, holding on to our story is our identity. And we have to, the ego doesn't like letting go of our identity. It's what makes us us. And letting go of our identities, unless we can do it with ease and, and get some tools that teach us how to let go, can be very um, a very painful experience emotionally. Um, it doesn't have to be. But if we're going under the old mindset that we have to feel pain, then we, we will feel pain. Um, I can bring stuff up, move it out and let it go in a matter of minutes because I understand it doesn't serve a purpose any longer. It, it doesn't. Um, I don't need to be a victim anymore. I own my space. This is my energy. This is my reality. And I create my reality and I want a happy one. Um, I choose a happy reality. Um, if somebody is dead set on being miserable, they're going to be miserable. If somebody says, I don't want to be miserable anymore and I want to let it go, then make a choice to let it go and not claim it any longer. As when we say, I am a victim, we claim it. And we are victim. When we say, that was me, that was my past, but that's not me anymore, I choose to let it go then we can start choosing to let things go. I have a, on my blog, I have a step process that I did with every situation for a little while because it helped me get through some things. Every time I experienced an emotion, I would stop. And one, I would try to figure out what the emotion was. Um, and then once I understood that every emotion wasn't, it might've been directed at, an, at another person, but technically they were all mine, my anger, my pity, my self-blame, my whatever it was, was mine. And it was my perception of the world. One thing that I found through my healing process, which surprised me, was that um, I had a lot of anger. But when I got through the anger, it was really sadness below. Yeah. And that's what the emotion was. So I think that's a, a really insightful comment that you have, that figuring out really what's the emotion we're dealing with. And we've got a question for you on chat, Lisa from okay. Full Circle Well. Lisa, can you tell us what helps to raise our vibrations? Anything that makes you happy. Laughter, um, a happy song, getting up and open the blinds and looking at the sunshine. For me, it's a picture of my grandchild and my son. Um, anything that makes you smile or takes you to a happy place in your mind will raise your vibration. Um, the things that will lower your vibration is anything that makes you sad. So, um, for me, for a long time, I printed up pictures of my son and my grandbaby and I posted them all over the wall. And every time I felt myself go into that place, I would look at the picture and I'd laugh. I printed up a stupid picture with his hair standing straight up in the air and I'd giggle and my vibration would rise. Um, now some people would say, oh, I like to eat. No, because that's feeding a hole in a need. So that's a different vibrational frequency altogether. But anything that doesn't do you harm, that makes you happy, truly happy. Some people take a bath. Some people um, go jogging or walking or out in nature. It doesn't matter. For each person, it's going to be different but it's whatever takes you to a place that you're happy and you can laugh. Laughter is one of the best ones that there is. Excellent. And I just posted about laughter yoga today on my business blog that they oh, yeah, yeah, have that, that and that they found that that works really well. We've got a couple of, uh, okay. um,
comments. One full circle said, thank you, dear Lisa, beautifully expressed. Um, Nicole has a few comments that meditation is wonderful for raising your vibration, and she loves books by Sanaya Roman. Yes. And Eckhart Tolle, The Power of Now and Awaken Your Life's Purpose, she said, are great books to read, especially when we have uh, painful memories. We have another question for you, Lisa, from Roger Dodger on chat. And I want to remind everyone, if you have a question, chat it in. I'm more than happy to ask. Or you can call in at 919-518-9773 or Skype in at Computers 2K Voice. Roger Dodger wants to know, I can't stop beating myself up. I wish I could stop. How can you help me with my obsessive negative thoughts? There's a couple different ways. One, as we grow up, we take on the role of abuser. Um, growing up, if we've been through abusive situations, somebody else is our abuser. But then as we grow up and we become adults, we do that all for ourselves. Nobody's in our head anymore but ourselves. We don't need anybody else to abuse us. We are perfect abusers ourselves. Um, to make a choice, everything is choice. Everything absolutely is choice here. When you get to a place that you're done and you really have to be done and you say, I'm done, then you can work to start letting things go. The only person in your head making you miserable is you. People are going to think whatever they want to think. It doesn't matter. The only person that we have to worry about is here. When we betray ourselves to compromise for what other people think, then we let ourselves down. Um, for anybody that is self-sabotaging or punishing themselves for the things that they've experienced in their life, in this life, to make a choice that you're finished, then there are different tools. There's radical forgiveness, um, which teaches to let go of things that you can let go of things in bulk. You can let go of things that in, in an entire lifetime, you can let go of entire past experiences at one time. It does take a little bit. It's, it's a lot of effort, but everything worth something is effort. Um, it doesn't have to be as hard as it has been in the past for a lot of us, which is what light workers are here to do is to help people heal, period. Um, we have to heal ourselves first, but others have helped us along the way. And now it's our turn. And for him, for Roger Dodger, to make a choice that you don't want to punish yourself any longer because technically the only person punishing you is you. So let yourself go, forgive you. Excellent. Because you are the one that matters. Can you talk, you touched on it about radical forgiveness. I'm not sure what that is, but you know, I find a lot of times people who, it's been my observation that people who struggle with being a victim also aren't able to forgive. So if you can talk a bit about radical forgiveness or maybe any advice you have for someone out there who's really struggling to forgive. Forgiveness, <laughs> I used to hear this all the time and boy, I couldn't stand it either. It was forgiveness is not for another, it's for self. And I'm like, but I can't forgive because they did me wrong. And I was so stuck in that mentality. The only person that was suffering was me. It was over and done and in the past. Um, radical forgiveness. Um, is a healing method um, of letting go by Colin Tipping. And I studied it when I studied my uh, metaphysical courses in conjunction with some other um, resources. Um, but for radical forgiveness releases the mentality that anything at all was ever done wrong. That there are no victims. And I know people are going to go, oh, wait a minute, I was a victim. Um, technically, it, it is a completely different way of thinking. It is a completely different concept. But for those who truly 
start to understand that we can choose the belief system that we want to live by um, or exist by, then if we chose this life, if we chose these parents, if we chose these experiences to learn from them technically, nobody's at fault and nobody's to blame because they're all choices. And under that perception, and, and perception is a choice. Um, under that perception, we have to let go because by maintaining that anything at all was done wrong, we maintain a victim mentality. So technically, it's about changing the way we think about everything. And it is radical. But I was able to let go of everything. And now it's just a distant thought. It's like that little film strip that runs by. Um, it, it, I can barely, what owned me as horrible, and I don't like that word, but horrible traumatic experiences are now just faint thoughts that are gone. And I have them and I have access to them, but they don't own me anymore. And there is, there is a difference in owning your experiences and being owned by them. I think that's, that's lovely and, and hearing you talk. I get what you're talking about, meaning like I had a choice. I chose my crazy family. I love you guys if you're listening. I chose the experiences. But it took a while to be able to accept that because I'm like, why would I choose pain? That's crazy. But what I've now come to realize is the most painful things, one, have made me who I am today and motivate me and I now understand why I went through that. I'm like, oh, this is so that you can help others. Okay, it all makes sense now. But what would you say to someone who's maybe quite not there yet? Because this, this took me a while to figure that out. So what advice would you have for them? And then we have another couple questions on chat. Um, find a group to attend that does this. Find um, somebody that works in energy um, find somebody that has been there. Find somebody that resonates with you, that makes sense to you, and let them help you. Um, the biggest thing, though, is you, ha you have to want it. You can't think your answers anymore. We can't. Um, this isn't about thinking. This is about opening our hearts and learning to love ourselves, which is the hardest thing that we all experience in the beginning because we all lack that. And that's not something you could have told me either. I'm like, oh, I love me. No, um, technically we all lack that. And it is a process. And I learned through joining a meetup group and attending meetings and participating with other people experiencing the same exact thing. And just so happened that a couple weeks later, I ended up with the group and I've, I've done it for over three years. And you know what? It helped me. I, I could not let go of it because it helped me grow. We, we are perfection in ourselves, but we have to be able to see that. And that's where letting go of control and trusting others to help us in order to come to a place where we can trust ourselves because ultimately it is about trusting ourselves and not anybody outside ourselves. I, I love uh, that and I think your advice about loving yourself is is spot on. There's a great Indigo Girls song and and the one line is when you learn to love yourself you'll dissolve all the stones in your path and it goes in a little more detail but that's all i'm going to share we've got a couple questions for you here on chat from say what what was the aha moment for the guest when she realized the past does not control her any longer i love that what was your aha moment uh, well standing at the kitchen sink trying to drink wine and I couldn't do it anymore and I'm spitting it out. And when everything started for me, um, 
I had everything expedite and come in through all at one time. And I was on a roller coaster ride. And I went from a workaholic to an alcoholic in a matter of weeks. And I went through that for probably about a year, year and a half. And then one day I woke up and went to try to drink some wine and I couldn't do it. I spit it out in the sink and I'm like, oh, no, no, no. You don't tell an alcoholic she can't drink wine. And I was flabbergasted at the fact that I could not stand the smell, couldn't stand the taste. And I, believe me, I tried again. I tried several times. And from that point on, I couldn't smoke. I couldn't drink. I couldn't do anything. And I realized at that moment that everything was different and that stuff had started lifting. My vibrations started coming up. My body started changing. Health problems I had had um, started surfacing and leaving. Um, so it was, there is no one moment. Um, I do remember going into the bathroom one day, I got a lot of my messages around water um, in the bathroom and realizing that in that moment, that I was one with absolutely everything and that I could not do anything to hurt another person because they were me. I couldn't speak ill. I couldn't get revenge. I couldn't do anything that wasn't kind anymore and that they were me and I was them. And that was profound for me at the time. So hopefully that answers the question. I think that's great. And what amazes me, I don't think there has been one guest that I've had, and I've done a year full of shows, who has had a similar story in the sense that they've had traumatic lives. You know, yeah. they're not someone coming from, oh, I'm happy and life's great, and it's always been that life. They've been through the fire. And so yeah. that's, and that they've had that trial, and that now they're here to share the light and to help people improve their lives. Got a couple other questions for you. One from Red High Heels. <laughs> I want people to take me more seriously. What can I do? You have thoughts on that? Take yourself seriously. Mm. People mm. will perceive you exactly as they do. They will perceive you as they see the world. As long as you worry about what somebody else thinks, it will interfere. Take yourself seriously and be true. Be true to yourself. People will treat you as you project. Unless it's not in their best interest, they're going to treat you the way they want to anyway. And as you become okay with yourself, the people that don't have your best interest in heart will start to fall away and you'll find new people. But take yourself seriously because you, everything that you think about yourself is what other people will see when they're looking. Most people don't care. They're, they see things as they see them. And for me, I had to come to a place to be okay with myself. And then what other people thought didn't matter anymore. And the thing about it is, is when you're vibrating at a higher frequency, you're doing everything that's in the best interest of everybody, including yourself. Um, and there is no wrong. It, everything is right exactly as you do it. Okay, we've got a couple comments I want to read to you and then we've got some more questions on chat. Carol says, Lisa, thank you for sharing. I feel so much of what you're saying about your awareness. I love your spirit. Um, Warrior Spirit wants to know, was stopping alcohol, alcohol divinely inspired, i.e., did angels, spirits, guides, aliens, God, did you feel like there was someone around you? What are your thoughts on that? I know that several times I woke up wondering why I didn't die overnight. I had drank enough for my body to shut down, but that there was something. I remember sitting in the floor wondering why I didn't die. And knowing that there was a reason I didn't, but I didn't understand it. Um, yeah. I had a higher purpose. And at the time, we don't understand it. But... We're here for a reason. And when we're at our lowest, that's what inspires us to change. And that's when our awakenings occur. That's when our awareness happens. And 
if it was my time, I'd have been gone, but it wasn't. And my purpose is to help others. My purpose is to heal. My purpose is to do the most amazing things. And it, and yes, it's definitely divine. There is no question. Now we have a follow-up question from Red High Heels. She is asking, I need more self-esteem. Do you have a comment to that? Yeah, um, self-esteem, one, can be as simple as, it's never that simple, but the chakra balancing will help, um, only because low self-esteem, if our chakras are, are closed off, um, will, the solar plexus will help with our self-esteem. Um, in addition to that, trust yourself. Trust that you are perfect as you are with all the things that you see as faults. Nobody is perfect in a physical body, but everybody is perfection as they are. And self-esteem takes time, but You are the one that believes you're not good enough. And that is a thought in your head. Start sticking. There was a girl that I met and she went all over her apartment and she stuck sticky notes all over her mirrors. I love you. And she would have to look in the mirror and say, I love you. Um, there is a phenomenal meditation. That's a guided meditation. It's by Greg DeVries, D-E-V-R-I-E-S. I got it off Amazon.com. It's the guided chakra balancing meditation is 42 minutes long and i listened to it for months on end on repeat when i slept at night and one it helped with insomnia and i started sleeping better um and helped get me off pain, um sleeping medication i was on a ton of medications i had every physical thing known to man um that was wrong with me and it helped reprogram my thoughts. It helped. And I didn't understand it. A lot of stuff we don't understand when we're going through it. We don't understand the purpose. We don't understand why we're experiencing it. It's all in hindsight and looking back, which is why I try to help people. Now, by as soon as they say something, I'm like, oh, that's what this is. And they can start to understand it in the forefront and start to change things before they occur instead of waiting to look back but, but everybody in this experience looks back and goes, oh, wow, I didn't realize. Journaling, write journals, read your words, um, see how much you beat yourself up, um, see how much what you truly think of yourself. But letting go of what you feel is wrong with you because technically those are things that we've been told and the people that told us those things were functioning under their own thought processes and their own belief systems and their own dysfunctionality. And you're living, a lot of times, we're living by the thoughts from somebody else in their head. So start creating your own thoughts. Wake up and say, I love me. Wake up and greet yourself and do something special for yourself that's positive and good for you. When you think more of yourself, those around you will treat you the same way, but you have to think it first. Um, and technically, surrounding your peop yourself with positive people that help you and don't drag you down. Excellent. Ultimately, sorry, go gonna ahead. Back here. Go ahead, sorry. Um, just gonna say, we. I wanna read a comment. We have a couple more questions. Nicole said, I thought this was a nice thing. Trust also that you are right where you are supposed to be and with something to learn in order to move forward and become more perfect, more godlike. Um, we have a question from Sally May. What exercise can I do to own my power? I like that. Okay. I have a, um, 
I have a thing with, I have everybody that um, I work with, and they're like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to make a decision. Close your eyes. When you close your eyes, you shut your logic down, and you go to your heart space. And for anything you want to know an answer to, it's right here. This will not betray you. Your power is in your heart. Your power is in your truth. Your truth is in your heart. Your mind, your thoughts will lie to you. It will drag you down. It will tell you you're not good enough. Get out of your head. Close your eyes. Go to your heart. Speak your truth. Um, it sounds easy. It's not. It is a step process. It does take time, but exist here. And when you get something from here, trust it. Don't betray yourself because that's how you lose trust, is by betraying yourself. If this is your truth, this is your power. Your power is in your heart. Okay, I, I kind of would count this, but I, I try to ask all the questions. Say what? It says, can you do some sort of meditation slash exercise with us now? So I thought that, I don't know if you'd want to lead us or something. I mean, I think that's great, but wanted to go ahead and ask that. And then we've got another question from Roger Dodger when you're finished with that. My meditation is simple. My meditation is, I sit with my eyes closed all the time. Um, my meditation is closing my eyes, putting my hand on my heart, and just paying attention to everything present, every sound, every smell, every breath. Breathing in light and love, breathing out gratitude to come to a heart-centered space. Um, I do it for just a minute or two at a time, and I'm done. I don't meditate for long, long periods. I'll do it. I do sit in silence for a lot and and work. But other than that, mine's very simple. So for that, I would just say, put your hand on your heart and close your eyes. And breathe and pay attention to everything around you and calm your thoughts. I love that. And I also want to let everyone know, we had talked about this yesterday, but Lisa's super intuitive. And so sometimes when she's closing her eyes there, that kind of gets her into her zone and focuses. But Roger Dodger uh, says, where'd you go, Roger? I want to earn more money. What can I do? Do what makes you happy. If you're not happy, you're not going to earn more money. Technically, and you're asking a light worker about money, that's kind of like an oxymoron. Um, because light workers don't tend to make a lot of money, especially in the beginning. Um, we operate out of a place of love, and we help absolutely everybody. Um, so you're asking somebody who money doesn't really matter to although we do have to put a roof over our head and, and buy groceries um but the chakra balancing really helps and i know i keep going back to that but that's been something um when your focus is money it will always interfere so make your focus something you love and do it from your heart and then you will do it with everything that's within you. And nothing will stand in your way. All right, excellent. So Roger Dodger, let us know. I just have to read you this comment, uh, Lisa. We're getting lots of wonderful comments about how everyone loves your energy and then they're enjoying the show. But Red High Heel says, I'm inspired. I'm going to give up my candies and get some hiking shoes. So thank you. Thank, I think you need to quote that. That's really wonderful. So I have a oh. question for you because okay. you talked about your alcoholism. And I haven't seen it in a while, but I've watched that show, Intervention. And it always mm -hmm. fascinated me because until I watched this show, you know, I could be like, oh, they're a drug addict and be kind of judgmental. But what I learned from that show is underneath the drug, sex, alcohol, whatever the addiction was, was an immense amount of pain. So I'm curious, one, because you've gone through it yourself and you work with people to help them heal, why do you think it is so many people, I, I think, 
victim mentality, struggle with forgiveness, or they turn on themselves and do a destructive, have a destructive addiction. So what are your thoughts on that? Well, if it had the word aholic to it, I had it. So it wasn't just alcoholism. Um, it was every aholic um, because it's something ingrained in us um, because you've got to understand, I chose every traumatic experience to experience in this life for a purpose. But in order to grow through them, I had to let go of them. And letting go of them in my fashion was pure torture and pain. So I drank, I smoked, I did everything. I was obese. Um, I was addicted to food. I was a workaholic. If you, if you name it, I was it. Um, I had to cry for a year and a half to let go. I had to mourn everything. Um, I probably experienced the most painful letting go process of anybody I know. But you know what? I wouldn't exchange it for anything in the world. The people that, those, or, or not people, those souls that carry the most immense pain can let go. We don't have to hold on anymore. It, it is time there are people to help us um, that it's now a choice not to punish ourselves anymore. The different aholic issues, control, whatever, are just ways to cover up the things that we don't understand, the things that we need to bury, the things we don't want to surface. Letting them surface and come up and letting them go is a whole lot less torture and a lot quicker than suffering with them for our entire physical life. Um, fear of the fear kept me prisoner. Facing the fear and letting it go gave me freedom. So I would say to anybody that's suffering from or suffering to any addiction to be able to find a way to face the fear. It's not as scary as we perceive it to be. It is a fear is in our mind. It is created. And technically everything is. This entire reality is. And we choose it. And we can choose our reality. We can change it to whatever we want it to be. I've often said on this show and had many guests say what you're saying and how I would word it is that whatever we have to, whatever pain we're holding on to is a lot worse than however we need to heal it. And that so many times, I know from my personal experience, once I kind of dealt with what I needed to, I was like, oh my goodness, this was a cakewalk compared to all the pain that I'd been holding on to. And that's something that motivates me to do this show because I want people to end their pain and I want them to move forward in life. And the energetic healing helps a lot. There are things that people don't understand that in the energetic healing comes up in sessions that, that we don't have access to. So when I do energetic sessions, I can actually tap into things people don't know is there and pull it from the energetic body and release it and let it go. So it, it expedites the process. Um, and just having somebody that can tune in to the frequency that we're operating on and, and give us um, pointers. I wouldn't say teach us because technically we teach ourselves, but guide us and help us with information, especially if they've already been there um can help us speed things up and make it easier to hear somebody else say it's okay to be upset but it's also okay to let it go and we don't have to be there anymore so what advice would you have lisa you know someone out there i i get what you're talking about becoming awake and aware but when i look at myself prior to that i was depressed i was not in a good space so what advice would you have for someone who's having a lot of pain or suffering right now, what would you say to them? Find it within yourself to say, I want something different. And if you truly want something different, then find somebody that will help you 
there are way too many people out there now that will help. Go out, clear some clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. Soothe your soul with our customized aromatherapy blends designed to support you in clearing clutter. Our unique blends include Space Clearing, Zen Mind, Serenity, Awareness, Natural Awakening, Loving Kindness, Gratitude, Forgiveness, Blissful Balance, and Present Time, which will become your favorite. Learn more at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. Thanks for tuning in to Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out. Sign up for our newsletter and receive a free copy of 10 Clutter-Free Living Tips. Ready to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire? Learn about Julie's coaching, ebooks, online monthly decluttering classes, how to organize your life, office hours, and her unique clutter-free living mastermind at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. You can also watch all episodes on YouTube or download on iTunes and more. Join us next Tuesday at 1 p.m. Remember, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step.